Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dino. For many, many people out there, motorcycling is not just a hobby, but it's a lifestyle. It's something that they enjoy doing, and part of that lifestyle tends to be wrenching or working on their motorcycles themselves. And I find this to be especially true with adventure riders and especially people that own one of these DR650s. They're just almost manufactured to be worked on by the people who own them. And this is certainly true with myself. I find just as much pleasure wrenching on the motorcycle and learning how the motorcycle works as I do riding it. In fact, sometimes I spend way more time wrenching on it than I do riding, unfortunately. However, if you are new to motorcycling or maybe you're new to a DR650 and you want to take the step from just riding to maintaining your motorcycle, you may be asking yourself, what tools do I need to do this? Do I need a shop like this or do I just need a few combination wrenches and a screwdriver to really maintain my DR650? And this is a question that I often get in the comments of the videos that I make. So today, we're gonna take a look at what I think is uh, the simple toolkit. Something that can get you off the ground doing some wrenching without breaking your bank. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I'll see you shortly. Why do I want to do a video about tools? Why do I want to do that? Well, as I said in the opener, I have over the years gotten a number of questions about different types of tools that I'm using in the videos, where to buy them, things like that. And it was recently, I think it was two or three videos ago, that I got a, a comment from Xantos Dude. Uh, at Zantos Dude, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And they asked me, look, I just bought a new to me DR650. I wanna start maintaining it. And what tools should I buy to maintain and possibly modify my DR moving forward? And I thought, wow, what a great question. I'm gonna take a stab at it. And it's, it's, this will be my opinion on what I believe would make a good first toolkit. It's not the do all end all. And I believe that's something you really need to understand right off the bat is there are some riders like myself out there that bring their bikes inside like this. And they have a fully stocked tool shop or a garage that has everything like flashlights and, you know, drills and, wire crimping tools right at their disposal. It makes the jobs much easier. And really, um, you become a glorified tool collector is kind of what I do. I used to go out every week and spend $50 and just buy tools I didn't have to build my collection and make the hobby more fun for me. But there is a subset of people, a subset of riders out there that believe you should really maintain your motorcycle with the tools that you carry with you on your adventures. And it's not an incorrect assumption. I really think it's, it's got a lot of merit, that philosophy, because it ensures, A, that you're carrying the tools you need to do just about anything on your motorcycle. It also, gets you familiar with the tools that you're carrying on your adventure. So you know their capabilities and their shortcomings. And if you find that there's a shortcoming, you can fill that gap before you go out on your next adventure. 
Somewhere in between the tool collector and the minimalist is probably where you're going to land. Today, I'm not going to go over all the tools in my shop. I'm going to talk about what I feel um, would make a robust enough tool collection so you can maintain your DR650 as per the manual. And the manual, for me anyway, is the first tool in the toolkit that I think a new DR650 owner should buy. So whether you can locate an electronic copy or buy a hard copy, for me, that knowledge tool really does assist you a lot. It's gonna show you the entire service intervals, what you should be doing at different mileages, and it really does help you to understand what tools you're gonna need to buy to perform those tasks. It looks overwhelming when you first look at it in the book, but the reality is many things repeat themselves at different intervals. You're gonna change the oil at a thousand kilometers and you're gonna change it every 5,000 kilometers after that. You need the same tools to do that job. So those tools, uh, you don't need to buy twice. Um, the other thing that's nice about a manual is it gives you the confidence to take those tasks on and gives you a resource to build on. Before we go any further, Suzuki does include a toolkit when you buy a new DR650 and it's basically held underneath the left side cover fairing, uh, just underneath the seat. There's a small tube there that you can access from the back. In fact, I think I might even have mine right here. Let me see. There it is. I've updated mine, but this is what it looks like. And you can flip the cover down like this and gain access. And that's where they store the toolkit that Suzuki provides for you. If you buy a used DR650, you may or may not have all or part of the toolkit. You're going to have to take a look. And for me, I don't even know if mine's a complete toolkit or not, but it seems to be fairly robust. And there's a lot of tools in there that can be used to maintain your DR650. Why don't we have a look at what comes with a DR650 first, and then we'll move on to what we think we need to augment. Okay, let's go over and hit the bench. My toolkit is located in the same position as a stock toolkit, but as you can see, I've updated mine. It's got a few extra tools in it, and right now it's actually a little light. Ooh. But here, hidden within, is the original DR650 toolkit that came with my bike. I'll put it up on the bench and we'll have a look at it. Here is our toolkit. It comes in a little vinyl bag and it comes pretty well packaged here. Now mine looks a little rough. They usually do after a while. They often get wet. Uh, there's usually condensation in these bags. So if you can ever find those desiccant packs that come in your beef jerky or um, medicine bottles or whatever, you can always throw one or two of them in here with your toolkit to help keep it from rusting. And I always spray mine down with WD-40 before I store it back in there to help displace water and keep things rust free. So what do we have here? Well, we have two box end wrenches. We have a 24 millimeter box end wrench and we have a 19 millimeter box end wrench. And these work in combination with this little tool here, which is actually a lever. It fits onto the end and gives you additional torque to remove the front wheel nuts or axle nut, I guess, with the 19 millimeter. And it fits on here with the 24 to loosen off the the nut on the rear axle. It's not perfect, but you can do it with these tools. You also have a 
double box end, or sorry, double opened end wrench. So you have a 17 millimeter and a 14, and a second 12 and 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter uh, wrenches and sockets are probably the most used size of all metric fasteners on motorcycles for some reason. 10s and 12s are very popular. 14 is kind of an odd size, but it's here. It comes with a rudimentary set of slip joint pliers for different size bolts and prying on things. And they're not terrible. They're as good or better than dollar store pliers. And this is a double tool here. This is a spark plug socket. And you can use, I believe it's the 17 millimeter fits on there. So you can reach down and take out the two spark plugs in the DR with this, which is handy. On this end, there's a small opening here that will accept the screwdriver bits. So you have a large, um, probably number three JIS or Phillips here that can slide in. And this creates a screwdriver. And there's this dual sided one that's both a, a Phillips head and a flat screwdriver that also fits in there. And it's not the best screwdriver in the world, but when you need a screwdriver, <laughs> this will do the trick. Together, you can do quite a bit of maintenance on your DR650 just with these tools. You could remove the wheels. You could, um, you know, take the side covers off, take your battery out for service, things like that. Simple, rudimentary jobs. And in a pinch, I think you'd be surprised how much you could do just with this kit here. If you want some very interesting conversation at your next DR650 event, or really any Japanese motorcycle event, stand up proudly and talk about how you are going to use your Phillips screwdriver to take out all the fasteners on your motorcycle. And quickly, you're going to have a bunch of people come up and tell you you're using the wrong screwdriver. I know that I did when I started this channel. Now, I have always purchased high quality screwdrivers. This is one of the things that um, spending a little bit more gets you a much better product. These Klein tool screwdrivers um, are often used by electricians and they're super high quality. The tips are nice and tight and they work extremely well and I've never had an issue with them camming out even on Japanese motorcycles. But there is a better choice and that choice is Japanese industrial standard. It looks very similar to uh, a Phillips head screwdriver. If I were to compare these two they're going to look identical to most people. You wouldn't even give it a second thought. However, the Japanese industrial standard is a slightly different angle on the tip and oftentimes it doesn't come all the way to a point like some Phillips do. And Japanese industrial standard or JIS for short is what most Japanese manufacturers use in their products, especially motorcycle and, and uh, power sports equipment manufacturers. You're going to find that if you go on Amazon, you can find a set of three JIS screwdrivers, a number one, a number two, and a number three for around, I don't know, 20 or $30, probably around $10 a screwdriver. The benefits to these is they fit much better in the fasteners. They resist camming out compared to an inexpensive Phillips that most people have. And you also get to tell people, can you pass me that JIS screwdriver? And they don't know what you're talking about. So a good set of JIS screwdrivers would probably be the first tool that I get. Next, <clears throat> you're going to want 
one or two flat bladed screwdrivers. You don't use these as often as you might with the JIS, but when you need a good quality screwdriver, these uh, Klein tools or Snap-on, Mac tools, something like that, are probably a good investment. They're not gonna break the bank, but they do grab onto fasteners much better than an inexpensive uh, screwdriver. You don't tend to twist them, and the edges are nice and sharp, so if you need precision on your carburetor or any adjustments, this works really well. If you're really, really concerned about cam out on a particular fastener, there's a couple things that you can do. They do sell what's called screw grab, which is sort of a semi-liquid grit that you can put into the screw, like into the, the star of the screw or the slot of the screw, and it bites onto the edges of your screwdriver and helps reduce cam out. The other thing is, if you have it, you can use lapping compound for your valves, but if you're just starting out, you're not gonna have that. So that might be my first tool to put in your toolbox, a good quality set of JIS and flat screwdrivers. The next tool that I'm going to suggest is a form of wrench, some form of wrench. At this point, you're probably gonna to have to make a decision whether you buy um, just loose wrenches like this, combination wrenches, or you buy yourself a socket set. Socket sets are great. Um, they make life a lot easier than just standard basic box end wrenches or open-ended wrenches. However, if money's tight and you have to make a choice between the two of them, I would be buying a nice set of combination wrenches or I think in Europe they call these spanner wrenches. Over here, they're, they're a combination wrench. And what that means is each one of them has both an open-ended wrench here that allows you to come into fasteners from the side and it has a box end wrench that allows you to put that over top of a fastener head and get a little more of a secure grip to it. These can do anything that a, a ratchet can do, just about anything, but ratchets lack the ability to come into the side of a fastener. And oftentimes you'll find yourself reaching for the good old combination wrench, even though you've got your fancy multi-angled super ratchet it just can't get in there. And honestly, for starting out, these aren't a bad choice at all. And, and I wouldn't spend the maximum amount on these. I would look for a reputable dealer. So in Canada here, many people go to Canadian Tire and buy their products. In fact, that's where these ones are from. This is their Maximum Mastercraft, um, maximum line, I think it's called. And they're a longer wrench than standard with a nice chrome finish that's easy on your hand. They have a lifetime warranty. And what I like about them is both the open end here and the box end isn't too fat. There's not excess forging or material around there that makes it difficult to get around a fastener. If you live in Canada, you're gonna know you never buy wrenches from Canadian Tire at the retail price. You wait for the two or three times a year that these things come on sale for around $29 a set. And you only need the metric uh, wrenches if you're just gonna work on your DR650. If you're building your kit for the first time, they usually sell a set that goes from eight millimeters to 19 millimeters. You're gonna lack probably the 16 and the 18, but those are sort of odd sizes that you don't use very often. And again, you're gonna pay about $29 on sale. So wait till they come on sale. And if you're in the States, Harbor Freight, um, you know, I don't know if Sears is still in there, but the Craftsman is at Lowe's now. There are a multitude of reasonable quality wrenches like this that you can get without breaking the bank. 
along with your uh, combination wrenches, I would probably get a good, um, you know, medium quality like Mastercraft adjustable wrench. This one will allow me to get the 24 millimeter nut that's on the back of the DR650. Or you can buy open stock and get your 24 millimeter. Or you can use the 24 millimeter that comes in your toolkit until you can afford to upgrade. But a good adjustable wrench comes in handy sometimes for things other than turning fasteners. For instance, you can tighten this down on a piece of aluminum that's maybe bent like a bash plate and you can use it like a crowbar to straighten metal out or get purchase and twist things. And of course you can use it as a wrench if needed. You don't need a whole selection of these, but a nice medium size. I think this is a, I forget what they even call it. This is a uh, 12 inch, so 30 centimeter adjustable spanner. will get you out of trouble sometimes. So that's my pick for my next tool here would be a good quality set of combination wrenches. As I said, if cost is a bit prohibitive, I would start with the combination wrench set, but as soon as you can afford one, I would buy a nice medium quality socket set. It doesn't have to be the most expensive socket set out there, but it needs to be of high enough quality that you can trust that the ratchet isn't gonna break and wrap your knuckles against something hard. You're going to look for something with a fairly high tooth count, around 72 or higher, and that makes it swing much tighter than the older low tooth count ratchets. And probably what I would look for is just a simple generic set like this. I bought this set probably 15 or 20 years ago. It's a Stanley. I think I paid around $49 for it, and I think they run around 80 to 100 now. But what this kit gives you is a reasonably good ratchet, 3 8 ratchet in this case. This one doesn't have a quarter drive, but most new sets do. And it gives you a selection of both metric and imperial through both a 3 8 drive and a quarter drive. And it's very, very useful. It comes with some extensions, an adapter. I think it might even come with a swivel. And this is a great foundation to add more ratchets to. In fact, I bought a quarter drive ratchet and just put it in the case it sort of fits. And any sockets it doesn't come with, like the 16 millimeter, it fits in there too somehow. I don't think you have to spend a tremendous amount. And again, Keep your eye on sales if you're in Canada at Canadian Tire because the maximum line at Canadian Tire is a pretty good ratchet set. And try to find one with the slimmest head possible that is of decent quality. You can always, again, update your ratchets. It's something I've done over the years and I've got a fairly good collection of them, but it will make your life easier. The other benefit to a ratchet set is it allows you to use a torque wrench. And although it's not necessary, um, when you're starting out, the biggest question I get is how tight do I tighten my oil pan bolt? Well, without a torque wrench, you're kind of guessing. A 3 8 drive torque wrench with a fairly wide range of foot pounds or Newton meters will allow you to follow your manual and torque things properly to what the manufacturer requires you to do. Over time, you're gonna get a feel for what 19 foot-pounds or 20 foot-pounds feels like. And even if you can't get the torque wrench in where you need it, what I will often do is I'll just clamp this in my vise, set it to whatever foot-pounds I want and feel what 20 or 30 foot pounds should feel like on the wrench. I'll do that a few times to get a bit of muscle memory and then I'll go in and torque the fastener that I can't get a torque wrench into as close as I can to that feeling. It, it's a little better than just freehanding it. Over tightening a bolt is the worst thing you want to do. 
If you want to see that, there's a great video on how to repair an oil drain plug where I was turning it the wrong way. Screwdrivers and wrenches are great and they'll allow you to do a lot of work on your motorcycle like change your air filter, tighten up your axle bolts and adjust your mirrors. However, you're going to need some pliers to help you grip things like fuel uh, clamps and trim off zip ties as you add things for your modifications that I'm sure if you own a DR650 you're going to want. There's four pliers that I would recommend anybody to have in their toolkit if they're just starting out. That is a nice set of needle nose pliers, a set of side cutters, and these are used again for cutting zip ties or pulling out cotter pins. These are really handy. A set of journeyman's pliers and where you're going to use these is if you need to twist wires together or pinch and crimp things down these are handy and lastly is a medium sized pair of locking pliers these are sort of a medium size and i have a larger size here too the Probably this larger size is what I might buy first because it can do a lot of what the little one can and it's a little bit stronger. When you need to get a bolt that's rounded off or pinch things together, a good set of locking pliers really does make your life a lot easier. And they can be used almost like a vise to hold things while you clean them and tidy them up. You'll find all kinds of uses for these. These are another product that I wouldn't spend tons of money on. Pliers tend to get beat up quite a bit. They tend to wear out. But don't buy the dollar store variety either. You're going to spend $10 or $12 a pair. A really good brand that I would suggest would be Channel Lock. And I don't have any Channel Lock out here. But all of my electrical tools in the basement are channel locks. So they got the ones with the blue grips on them. They're made in the United States. They're very well priced and they have a lifetime warranty on them. The ones I have out here are again Canadian Tire Specials and they've worked very well for me over the years. With all of my tools like this, when I'm done with them, you're always going to see me wiping these down with an oily rag to keep the rust off of them. And it's something I do on purpose. I don't just wipe them clean and spray them with alcohol to clean them up. I want a little oil on these to keep them from rusting. Same with my wrenches and my screwdrivers, especially out in the shed here where the temperature fluctuations actually makes a little bit of condensation in the winter months. You can see they still work very well. Uh, I can operate them with one hand and they work good. So, Get yourself a good set of pliers, four of them. You're going to spend $40 or $50 on those. They'll last a long time if you look after them. The next item that I would probably recommend is a good set of Allen keys. There are a lot of fasteners on the DR650, such as your exhaust bolts, that need a good quality set of Allen keys. And I have a set right here. Again, this is a Canadian Tire Mastercraft set. I also have a set of T-handles, but you only need one, and you only need the metric versions for the DR650. This is a combination of both Imperial and metric, you can see. And I would spend a little more and get Allen keys with the ball end on the long side. This allows you to get into tighter spaces and angle the Allen key a little bit in tight spots and still allow you to turn it. I would say this is something you want to spend a little bit more money on than the cheap varieties. These can bend if they're not hardened correctly, or they can chew up the fastener and really can make it hard to get a fastener out. 
spend a little more. You still don't need to buy the Snap-on varieties. But if there's two choices at the hardware store, look for one that's of a higher, uh, it's going to be higher cost, that's how you're going to know. But usually they're chromoly and usually they're black. They're, they're black uh, oxidized like this to protect them, not the shiny silver ones. And I don't know why that's the case. When I worked in a bicycle shop as a young man, all the silver ones bent and anything that was black oxidized like this tended to be a much stronger, more robust Allen key. So that's what I would also add to my kit is a good set of Allen keys. Something many people don't realize they're going to need when they buy a motorcycle is some form of measuring device. The most rudimentary would be a simple one foot or 30 centimeter ruler that you can get at the dollar store for less than a dollar. And it's actually functional for adjusting things like chain sag or, uh, you know, measuring the height of your mirrors or whatever. You don't use it often, but when you do, you do need something to do those measurements. Maybe center your axle bolts up, things like that. I always have all kinds of tape measures and vernier calipers, but if I was looking for something um, to, to measure with to get started in my toolkit, I would probably go to my local dollar store and see if I can find a metric tape measure. Canada is pretty easy to find one. You can make do with converting over to Imperial to work on this for things like your, your chain sag. But if you can get one that has both, it does make your life a little easier as you compare it to the shop manual. The reason I say go to the dollar store is tape measures are reasonably accurate at best. And if you only have one, it's gonna be within a few millimeters of being accurate. So you really don't need to spend 20 or $30 on a tape measure. You can go to your local bargain store and get one for a dollar or two, and it'll do what you need it to on your DR650 for service. So pick yourself up a cheap, inexpensive tape measure and throw it in your toolbox. While you're at the dollar store in the tool aisle, do yourself a favor and pick up one of these. And what this is, is a magnetic pickup tool. If you've ever dropped a nut or bolt down inside the frame of a motorcycle or heaven forbid down the carburetor or through the spark plug hole, one of these little rare earth magnet pickup tools can save your bacon. They're really handy and they are dirt cheap. Like I say, dollar store, a dollar, and they work really well. And these rare earth magnets are so strong, they just, they can pick up so much weight, it'll blow your mind. So go get one of these things and throw it in your toolkit right beside your dollar store tape measure. One of the more specialized tools that you're gonna want for your beginner's toolkit is some form of feeler gauges to set your valves. You can go out and get a complete kit like this from most automotive stores. And what it is, is it's a series of metal tongue depressors almost that are extremely precision ground or flattened to different thicknesses. You can use these to feel between the tappet and the top of the uh, valve itself, the valve stem, to make sure that your clearance between those two is accurate. I have a full set of these because I use them for all kinds of different motorcycles and uh, small four-stroke engines. But if I was going to go out and just buy a DR650, I would, this is one of the luxury items I would probably buy from ProCycle. They sell a set of feeler gauges 
that are specifically made to set the valve clearance on your DR650. And the nice thing is they are very small and slender and they're bent to fit down in around the um, valve covers themselves. So they make the job much more enjoyable. They're easy to find. You can uh, use them on the side of the road if you really wanted to. They're that convenient. Along with that, you're going to have to be able to turn the tappet screw and tighten it. There's a tool that you can buy for this that you probably should buy to make your life easier. I made my own, but these aren't terribly expensive. I'll, I'll look it up and put, a, put one up on the screen here. I think they were around 30 or $35. And this will allow you to hold the, uh, the top of the tappet screw and then tighten the jam nut to hold it securely. So your feeler gauges and your valve tools all go hand in hand in order for you to set your own valves. And it's something you could bring to Suzuki, but it's really not that hard to do. I've got a video on it if you want to watch, and there's lots of other videos out there on the interweb that shows you how to do this. And it's, I'm going to say, almost a rite of passage with the DR650 to set your own valves. And it's a really good, substantial feeling when you do it for the first time, start the bike up and hear it run tickety-boo for you. It gives you a lot of confidence and it's gonna set you down on the path for many, many more modifications and services on your bike. It's gonna give you a lot of confidence and it's something that pretty much anyone who can turn a wrench can do. That's probably my last tool to put in my toolbox. Were you aware that according to the maintenance schedule in this manual, you should be changing your brake fluid every two years in your DR650? It's something that's very valuable information and it is really the reason why I made that my first choice in my toolkit for new DR owners. Now, this is a very subjective subject. I've included what I thought were uh, the tools that I might buy if I was starting my first toolkit again. However, I'm sure there are people out there that have a completely different opinion or maybe just would add one or two different items to make the toolkit more functional for a new person starting out. So please leave those comments down below and help other people to sort of build their hobby and become better home mechanics, better riders, enjoy the sport more. Please, I really encourage you to do that. Now, I'm just about done here today. I had such a fun time putting this video together, pulling tools out, deciding what I would and wouldn't include. But now I gotta put all that stuff away. So I'm gonna get to work on that. I hope to see you soon here, next time the videos come up. But until then, you tinker easy. I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. Bye for now.